Hi, I'm John Paul of the blog Pimental.com. We are continuing the series of videos about SCT messages. This video is about the PAX4, the payment return message. I will first remind you the overview of all the message exchange in the SCT's classic scheme so that we can locate the PAX4 and the parties which exchange it. Then I will present you the PAX4 identity card. What is the name of the PAX4? When was it born? And what is its place of residence? After that, we will talk about the PAX4 message structure and building blocks. We will then consider the reasons why the PAX4 is needed. And we will end the presentation with a focus on PAX4 reason codes, where we will see that not all possible reason codes allowed in ISO 2022 can be used in SEPA. Let's begin with the overview of the message in the SCT implementation guidelines documents. The PAX412 is highlighted in green color on this slide. It is sent by the beneficiary bank to the debtor bank. This is always the case in SEPA credit transfer. The PAX4 is always sent by the creditor bank to the debtor bank. So if you work on a receiving, if you work on a project and you are talking about receiving a PAX4, then you must be on the debtor bank side. So always keep this in mind. Let's take a closer look at the PAX4 with the next slide, which is about the PAX4 identity card. The PAX4 is called Payment Return Message. In SEPA, the version 2 of the PAX4 is used, but in ISO 2022, the version 8 is already available. So which means that the ISO 2022 is way ahead. Many changes have been made on the PAX4 message since uh, the version that safe use was published. The PAX4 is a message exchange in the interbank space, either between two banks or between a bank and a clearing system. Like the PAX8, the PAX4 message was born on March 30th, 2009 and put into its place of residence, the message definition report. <laughs> the file name is the payments maintenance 2009. That can be downloaded on the ISO 2022 website. As the name of the message suggests, the PAX4 is used to return the funds. The funds return happens after settlement between two financial institutions. It can be the settlement of credit transfer instructions or the settlement of direct debit instruction. In our case, we consider credit transfer since we are talking about the SCT. In any case, the sender of the funds gets his money back. How does a PAX4 message look like? The payment return message is composed of three building blocks, a group header, an original group information block, and a transaction information block. The group header is mandatory and present once. It contains elements such as message identification and creation date and time. So message related to, sorry, elements related to the whole message. Original group information block. That block is optional and present only once. It contains elements such as original message identification or original message name identification. So it refers to the original message as a whole. This block is seldom used in SEPA messages. Finally, we have the transaction information block. That block is optional and repetitive. It contains elements referencing the original instruction and elements relating to the return instruction. This is most of the time the block used to send information related to the original transaction in SEPA. Now, you may wonder, why is the PAX4 needed? Let's see that 
on the next slide. You probably recall this sentence from the previous video. Only the Pax 8 will be needed in an ideal world. But there is no process without exceptions. And that's why we need exception messages. And the Pax 4 is one of those messages. It is used for exception handling, generated as a result of exception handling. Many exceptions can happen during the processing of the credit transfer by the creditor bank. Among others, you can encounter the following situations. The creditor account does not exist at all. So where will you put the money? Or the creditor account exists, but it's closed. The money cannot be credited on that account. Monetary address information may be missing. In that case, the creditor bank cannot process the transaction and will return the funds. Or the transaction may be forbidden. There are many other reasons. When above situation occur, the money cannot be credited on the creditor account. And the creditor bank then will send the money back to the debtor bank. But the situations we just uh, listed are not the only ones you may have. You find many other situations in the SEPA implementation guidelines. This brings us to the next slide, the PACS for reason codes. In the SEPA implementation guidelines, you find all the reason codes that are allowed in SEPA. They can be found under the interbank return credit transfer data set description and under the paragraph message element specifications. It is important to note that these are the reason codes that can be used in SEPA. The exhaustive list of reason codes used in the ISO 2022 are available in the external code set spreadsheet. Let's see how we can download that spreadsheet and see the return reason codes. So for that, we will go to the ISO 2022 website. Then under the catalog of message menu, there is a sub menu called extensions and variants. And there you have the external code sheets. So if we go there, here is the link to download the external code sets spreadsheets. Just click on the link and you can download it. So as you see, I have already downloaded it. So let's open it. When we open it here, we have the intro and history sheets and the ex external code sets list. So let's go to this sheet. Here we find the we find the list of all the external codes set. And we are interest we are interested in the reason, the return reason codes. And we see this is the number 13. So let's go to that sheet, number 13. Here it is, return reason. Alright, so now we see we have overall we have overall 66 reason codes. So there are reason codes, all possible reason codes here, reason codes that are allowed in SEPA, but also reason codes that are not uh, allowed in SEPA. We have, we have a reason code like the EMV liability shift, which of course doesn't make sense in a SEPA context. So, or no mandate, which doesn't make sense in the SEPA credit transfer context and so on. So that's the, re the reason why not all uh, reason codes here are allowed uh, in the SEPA credit transfer scheme. But good to know that this exists, and that's why I wanted to show it to you. So let's go back to the slides. Here is the list of all the reason codes allowed in SEPA. All right, that's the end of this presentation. If you have any question, just post a comment below the video. If you found the presentation useful, you can like the video and subscribe to the channel. You can also go to permantra.com and subscribe to the newsletter to receive regular updates about articles and videos. Take care and see you soon on this channel.